All right. Enough nonsense. It's Final Fantasy Friday. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> All right, if you guys recall, we had just started this up just started this up after we finished Final Fantasy 1 right before we took off for E3 so this is a long time coming back we uh, barely got started hey see PlayStation controller Xbox controller while the buttons are different, at least X is your go button and A is your go button and they're physically in the same location. But shitbag Nintendo, which I guess it's really not their fault because they've been doing this since the beginning, they flip that. And like that same location's the B button and it backs out and it's just, it's like, dude, like, stop it. So whenever I play this game, I never know which PSP game, so it's gonna be the same as the controller. Alright, so. <clears throat> there's some like bad guys and shit. <laughs> That's what I remember about this game. There's some bad guys, uh, like, there's a war. Everybody's getting taken over in the war. We'll try this for a little bit. We're gonna throw the uh, throw the chat up. All right. So first off, we got Furion, we got Maria, Guy, and Minwu. And the first thing that we noticed is we're allowed to start doing this, which this is a thing that shows up in later Final Fantasy games and in Final Fantasy Two. Final Fantasy One didn't have this, so Final Fantasy Two is gonna be the beginning of that whole. Uh, put people in the back row to minimize the damage they take. Now, there's no classes in this game, which is super fucking weird. So what happens is you just give them a weapon and they just get good with that shit. They literally get good. Uh, so Furion, because he started off with a broadsword and a buckler, he's kind of becoming the tank. Um, Maria is kind of just becoming the rogue. Or archer. Because she's just good with a bow. I guess she would just be the archer because there's a dagger in there for the... Uh, and then Guy, he's becoming your barbarian guy because he's got a shitload of HP. So it's like, how do I determine how much HP they gain? So like... One, they're going to get good with a weapon. <laughs> but two, they have base stats to kind of level up on their own. I don't... I keep getting these calls from out of state. Phone calls to my cell phone from out of state. They ring twice and they hang up and they never leave a voicemail. But it's always a different state every time it happens or I would assume it's just a, you know, wrong number. Um, so anyways. Yeah, you know, like, how do... So, why... So, this guy is a, you know... He's level 3 in Sword and Shield. He's level 3 in Axe. But why does he have 71 hit points, she has 25, and he has 41? Is that part of the base stats or is that because... <clears throat> Because he's three levels in Sword and Board, that makes him have a little bit more HP. And because she gets less HP from leveling up with a bow. But see, on the other side, I don't think that's the case. I think there's these characters kind of have a leaning to a certain class. Because Guy, look at him. He's When he talks, he's stupid. 
He looks like an idiot. And he looks like an idiot. <laughs> so it kind of makes sense that he's the big dumb guy. You know? And then we have, uh, we've been talking to this leader of the rebellion, this kind of queen chick, and she gave us Minwoo and told us uh, that he had to help us. Minwoo is uh, level one in all weapons, but he's fucking like a beast. He's got 175 hit points. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyways. Uh... I have no idea what we're doing. Now you see those little, that airship there? They're flying over to whatever nation's being attacked. See, he just fucking one-shotted him with a stick. I think he's a white mage, to be honest. HP increased. Guy's HP increased. See, from 25 to 30 and from 69 to 87. What's up, Red Man? Welcome back. I already got a canoe? What the fuck? Trying to figure out this system in Final Fantasy 2. It's uh, vastly different. Oh god, he's poisoned. Nice arrow. And his staff level increased. Now, do you know magic? You do know magic. Oh. But it's not telling me that he has poison right now. See? I think he's fine. Am I supposed to go back to where those bad guys were? Grabbed food? Nice. What'd you get to eat, man? I'm fucking hungry. Somebody order me some. <laughs> I think he just, you lose status ailments. Okay. All right, we gotta think old old games, right? What did you do when you forgot what you were doing in the game? Some pasta, kolbasa, ooh, ooh. When you're playing an old school game and you forgot what the fuck you were doing. Go back to the quest giver and ask him, <laughs> what the fuck was I doing? I was like, the, in these old ones, like, where the door is, it's a straight line up to, like, the quest giver, so you can just run. Okay, Hilda, she's like, uh, the Empire, like, also suffered heavy losses in the Battle of Fen. The ability to Dreadnought and Bafsk to help compensate for the losses. I just learned that, dude. I'm glad I came back and talked. Let me ask you about the Dreadnought. The Empire is, like, using the people of Basque to use the Dreadnought to build it. I mean, the Dreadnought itself is, like, this massively heavily armored, like, dick ship. Uh, learn about dick ship. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, ask him about the airship. A man named Sid, the former captain of Fent's Order of, like, the White Knights, built an airship. A ship that sails the skies, but the airship captivated him, mind and soul, and so he left Finn. <laughs> We're par for his absence. I'm told he now lives in like Poft, granting travelers passage on his airship for a price. Googs. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, that felt good. Oh, that was King George on that coin. Look at that. Oh, there's one with a crown on it? I wonder what the difference is. Those are your grandfather's medals on your mom's side. That's super cool. Fought for... That's King George on it. Did he fight for Britain? I don't recognize the uniform.
He then uses this money to make further refinements to this airship, or so the story goes. Yeah, they're British. So he is. The second picture down on the left. Oh. Yeah, that's cool, man. His family are in the other pictures. It was actually really neat for for me because, like, I've always grown up. My family on my mom's side's from the south. My family on my dad's side's from Germany. Um, but the southern part of the family, they're all about legacy and like. Uh, family and things going back for a long time and a lot of hand-me-downs and stuff like that. Now, my wife, her family is um, half-Irish, like full-blooded half-Irish and then full-blooded half-Mexican. Um, so, like, she's not in touch with the Irish side so much as she is the Mexican side, so she doesn't understand... Like, the Mexican culture doesn't have a lot of hand-me-down kind of stuff. Um, they have a lot of ritual that they like to teach and hand down. But they don't have, like, a lot of possessional things that they hand down. Um, so, anyways, she's like, I don't understand why everybody's fighting about the, your grandmother's stuff. Like, why do you care about the war stuff? And I had to explain her. I'm like, you know, like, making tamales around Christmas time? Like, that's, that, that's, this is, this, that thing. And it was, it was just really cool that in mine and her relationship, I was able to explain to her that the most important event, hands down, and I, I doubt anybody can disagree with me, the most important event in human history on this planet was World War II. And Brindo, mine and your grandfather, played a part in that shit. Maybe a small part, but, like, they were a piece of that giant fucking puzzle, which is the everything that is the way it is today. It's because of that war. And when I explained that to her, she, like, it was cool in our relationship that, like, she saw that and her mindset changed and was like, holy shit, that is really cool. It was, it was a neat little growing point, but it, it's so cool to go back and, like relive what your grandparents went through you know to look through your history like you're saying it's just ugh. so important yeah a lot of people don't care <laughs> only about their phones right uh so are we so what do we do please lose no time in bringing back the mithril all right. I thought I was gonna be good at this. I was gonna see how long I could go without using a guide. Let's face it, people. I'm a sham. I'm no good. Okay, let's see here. Final Fantasy II: Souls of the Rebirth. Final Fantasy II: Souls of the Rebirth walkthrough is still in development. Many sections of the walkthrough are incomplete. Bro, you wrote such a good... <sighs> he, this guy that I was following for Final Fantasy 1, I, I mean, he had the best fucking... Here, I'll even show you guys. Do I got... Do I have a mouse? Am I capturing? I'm not. Oh, you said something. Hold on, let me read that. Grandfather was in the home guard as an AA gunner. And they got transferred to Royal Engineers and fought in Italy. Oh, that's actually really cool. My grandfather was just... I think he was drafted uh, infantry. He was just boots on the ground. But he got all the way up to... Hold on. I don't want to misspeak. I think he got all the way up to Master Sergeant. No. Staff Sergeant. He got up to Staff Sergeant, so he was decent at it. My grandfather joined at 17. He wanted to be a pilot, but they wouldn't let him. He had a bad eye. Dude, they were picky about that stuff. But yeah, so it's like, just look at this walkthrough, man. He broke it out into chapters, and then you go into a specific chapter, and he had, look at this. Look at this. And then it, and then you can click on this stuff? Look at this. This this guy made like a fucking amazeballs guide. 
So you can see how sad I was when 